Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What are you doing? <laughs> walk on? Yes, walk on. You know, my dear? I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see all our visuals, make sure you go ahead and sign up for our membership on our YouTube channel. It's Boss Talk Podcast 101 on every platform. Type that in, you will find us. And um, thank you in advance. Man, hey, man, listen, man. We have a very special guest here today, y'all. She don't need no introduction. She frequents the show. Uh, she's a woman of the cloth. She is a very special friend of mine. I need y'all was in the building, guys. <laughs> you like that intro? <laughs> <laughs> the intro was ready today, y'all. Yes. Um, so... I just wanted to get you on here for a few minutes to uh, just uh, talk to you about, you know, just what you've been up to. Where you been? I have been. Oh, my goodness. I have been running and gunning, but it has been really, really good. Uh, my youngest daughter graduated high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine did, too. They out of here. No more bills here in a minute. We messed so you're an empty nester now? I am an empty nester now. Ooh, how that feeling? Oh my, it, it will feel good if they weren't coming home almost every weekend. Oh. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love my babies. Uh, but it is it is a different experience. Uh, my grocery bill has gone tremendously down. Praise the Lord. Can't Holly. you tell me yeah. anything no more? Because my yes. daughter loves cheese puffs and all yes. type of little old different cookies. I knew that wasn't me eating all of them cookies, man. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he said, he said, hold up. Now I know who was eating and who wasn't messing, clean, stuff, messing up. stuff up. And you can't blame it on the other one now because uh, yeah, the other one got, gone. Yeah, that's it. Yes. So, I mean, how 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 was it? dealing with your daughter being that Bishop Omar rest in peace was not there and you had to deal with this on your own just getting her ready for college and was it was she able to work through it or did she bring him up we we both brought him up um, it was very very difficult to say the least uh, but um, I believe there was healing through that uh, we both uh, walked along each other it was strength just listening to her be real um, to really find herself, to have her voice. Um, I never wanted her to be silent. I didn't want to silence her voice to speak for her. I wanted her uh, to speak for herself. She has so much of her dad in her. And when I tell you so much, she is a workaholic. She was working in high school. She's now working in, in, in um, college. She started her own makeup business. Um, uh, she did that on her own. Uh, she signed up for college. She did that on her own. Uh, the only thing I basically did was just support, I mean, just do the financial aid part. I mean, even that part of the financial aid, she did it all. Like, wow. she was like, Mom, she just brought here it, it is. Sign. She here. brought it in. And um, and so it was so easy. Uh, and I kept thinking, okay, I'm missing something. What am I missing? But she was so on her game. She was on her A game uh, to where it felt like a breeze. Mm. Um, everything came. Like the day of her even getting her dorm room, she got it on the day that they opened it up. I didn't even know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about it. Um, I wasn't prepared for that. She called me. It's like, Mom, I'm 500 and something in line, you know, waiting on line at the schoolhouse. And I was like, are you in a class? Like, what's going on? How are we doing this? She said, I just need the I just need your debit card. Like everything else is working out. And so, I mean, when I tell you it was just it was I just felt like there's something else. Even the day of moving, we prepared and um well let me go back. Uh, just getting prepared for her to go off to college. Um, I kept missing I was like, I wish I was here. I wish your bishop was here. Did you I cry? I wanna tell him something. Did you cry? Oh my god, I cried almost every night. I wanted to like I wanted him to see how grown or how mature our baby girl was for this, um, and I kept saying, "Is everything okay?" And so she was like, "Mom, please stop asking me that, cause I'm okay. I just want to make sure you're okay, because I'm not gonna be here." And so she felt like, "Well, I know I'm leaving, but I want to make sure you're in a good headspace instead of vice versa. I want to make sure she was in a good headspace." <laughs> and so uh, graduation came, and of course that was a big day. Um, graduation day, um, it started off real rocky. Mm. Um, she came in and she was all dressed up, and and I could I knew I know my baby, so it was just her and I. We were there, and I was like, is something 
something not right. And I just kept thinking to myself, and I was like, I know what it is. And I said, are you okay? She said, yes, yes, yes. And, and finally she just came back and she said, no, it's not okay. You know, she just had that moment like, he's not here. Mm-hmm. Like, every big event going on, he will not be here. Graduation from high school, graduation from college. He'll be there in spirit. You know, getting married. That's what I was telling her. He's going to be there in spirit. And, and you have his DNA. You're going to always carry him. Right. Uh, some shape, form, or fashion. Um, so she's like, well, even you know, when I get married, I'm going to keep the name Jawa. I'm not getting rid of My husband just going to deal with it. Right. You know, she's like, I want to always have a part of my dad. And so graduation happened. Um, then the graduation party came. <clears throat> Same thing. Same, you know, he's not here. So we did, um, at our table, I, did a, I had a picture of him sitting mm-hmm. there as if he was there. And so she cried about that. Um, Sometimes I wonder with even things like that, you know, it's like you do that to feel like they're there, but then does it hurt even more sometimes? I I, want to say both, but the remembrance. Not that you forget a person because you can never forget your dad or your late husband, but just the fact of just saying that we want to honor and respect him in his seat uh, because if he would have been here, he would have been there. Right. And so we always give honor where honor is due. And so, um, and I think that made it feel like he was a part of. To her, it was like my dad was a part of it. Got even it. though he wasn't physically here, but he was here by, by, uh, by spirit. And mm-hmm. so it made it, it, you know, made it like, okay, he's, he's here. Like, mm-hmm. we're not going to ever forget about him. No matter where we go, what goes on, he's going to always be a huge part of our lives. What about some of the pl- relationships he built, like far as prison ministry and stuff like that? Have you ever reconnected with any of those ties? Like when he, you know, you know what I mean? Because yes. he did prison, it, it, he he had a connection with that. I have or a funny story of this. <laughs> the kids were like really, really young. They might have been, I mean, might have been six or nine, it might have been three. Um, I come home from work one day and there is a Hispanic gentleman and a black uh, gentleman. But the black gentleman, I believe he spoke in two or three different languages. At this particular time, he was speaking in Spanish. So I come into my house and I'm looking for my husband. I'm like, what happened? What happened? And the girls are there. Their hair is combed. When I left, their their hair was not combed. So when I got back, I'm thinking, what lady has been in here? Right. Right? You know how we are. Yeah. Right? And so I'm like, where is he? And and they were like coming out. Oh, we we're fine. We got them all. They're, they they we, we've cooked. They everything is fine. Oh, he him, did everything. everything. You no, know, they did. This. They did. They did this. So I'm going what? And so we go to bed that night. He was like, well, they're gonna stay here tonight because they're friends from out of town, quote unquote. They're friends from out of town, so they're gonna spend the night tonight, and they're gonna get up and they're gonna go on the way the next day. So a couple of days that passed and they were still there. And I'm like, what's going on? Are they not able to leave? Because everything was fine, but I was just trying to check to make sure everything was fine. He said, well, I didn't tell you at first because I didn't know how you were going to take it. But these two young men were in my prison, uh, back in my juvenile prison in, in Gainesville. Um, <laughs> but they got into the adult prison, so they went away. They just came home. <laughs> what did you think? I said, what? No word. He said, I know if I would, he said, I knew if I would have told you, you would explode it. He said, just like you're doing now. I said, the only reason why I'm not exploding is because they are, you know, they are fine young gentlemen. They, I see that they changed their world, their life, and the girls absolutely loved them. They were looking up to them. See, that's the first but, thing I would think about because I have young girls in the house. That's exactly. the only thing I would be thinking I about. Said, what in the, he was like, they're not going to, I'm telling you. He said, I will leave them with any, he said, I will leave the house in their hands. That's how much I trust and love them. But it was totally different because I'm like, I'm not used to this. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we get a call from a young gentleman who was in prison. He was having some problems, but he was having problems with people on the outside. Mm. And so he was like, I'm getting out in a few days and I'm going to come by and I'm going to see you guys. And on my way to commit murder uh, because I'm going to kill someone. Da, 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 da. It what? was a whole thing. And I'm going... How does he, I'm like, okay, how does he know? I knew you guys knew back in the day, but how did he get your number? Who did he get the number from? So while he had him on speakerphone, he's getting dressed and he he put him on mute so he could hear him. He said, he don't even know where we live. We're not worried about it and everything. I'm like, he has your number. 
somehow he may have our address. So this may be something that we need to think about. So he takes him off mute. He was like, okay, well, I'll see you in a couple of days in my office. He's like, no, no, Mr. Omar, I got your address. You live at da 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 And that oh. was the address. That was the real address. Wow. He could have come by there before he go to kill somebody. Yes, I freaked out. I said, this cannot be happening. I'm like, I thought this world, I thought you were like, you know, I don't know what I thought Keeping in this the world. world separate. Yes. <laughs> the home separate from what you're doing what, out what here. Happened? I thought this was like, he talked him out of it. He talked him out of it. It was nothing but the grace of God, but he talked him out of it. I was like, what? Who uh, does this? Man. Who finds a, a address <laughs> in prison? I think a lot of times, like I said, you just never Google. know what, what God, well, God is well, pretty much. Well, it was much, back then. I don't know Google was even. A thing, right. Yeah, I don't know if Google was a thing back then. Man, so. Yeah. How is it going down uh, with the ministry? Uh, having you know you you full time uh, pastor like yes like how is that for you? The full time pastoring it is something that I have I would never been ready for never in a million years even if God Himself would have came down and said I'm going to put you in this seat, uh, which of course He did tell me, but I would it just blew my mind. I, I I've never growing up I never thought I would be a pastor. If anything but a pastor. Growing up, I was in the church, but I wasn't really like we talked about it before. I wasn't of the church, you know. There you go. So um, just to say that I'm a pastor now to see everything that I've come through, came through, uh, walked through, um, all of the pressures, the uh, the hate, the bickering, uh, the judgmental thoughts, um, and then to walk as a woman, quote unquote, pastor. Um, has not been easy. Um, not everybody receives a woman as a pastor. Mm -hmm. And so that too brought, um, as they say, brought smoke. <laughs> you don't right. want no smoke. Because I've heard that smoke. before. I've heard that a woman can't be a pastor. They can only be a teacher. They can't be a pastor. Yes. What what scriptures justify the fact of you feeling it's it's something that talks speaks to you being uh, in the pastor role? Well, first, before I go to the scripture, I want to go to my encounter. Okay. So my encounter uh, with the way that God and, and Jesus has been a part of my life, my encounter was, is that, of course, God spoke to me and, and said it. But the very time that God spoke to me again and said it was after my husband had 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 passed. I, I was laying in my bed. I never would forget. And I was like, God, I just want to hide. I just want to hide. I don't want to go anywhere. Uh, I know I have I have two amazing daughters to raise. I older two kids are grown. Um, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to live. Like you know, basically, it wasn't even about ministry. It was about life. Like God, I don't want to be here. Um, I don't want this. Um, I never imagined doing life without him. Like every part of my world was Bishop Omar Jawa, uh, everywhere, um, and so now. I have no idea <coughs> Omar. So um, I don't, I don't want to go on. And in that moment, um, God just began to share with me. He said, even before you were born, I knew March 11th. I knew his date. Um, and I knew exactly. And then when you think about it, like when he first got sick in October and he passed in, in March, um, he said, I gave, you five, I gave you five additional months, which five is grace. And, um, and he said, and I set some things in order, even though you didn't understand it and you weren't aware of it, I was setting things in order. And so because these things have been set in order, um, now it's your time uh, to come and to do my work. And I'm like, well, God, I've been doing your work. I've been doing it from the sideline. I've been doing it from the background. I've been walking alongside my late husband. I, you know, I'm here. And he said, no, I want you to be here. There was a mantle that had fell on you. And now you have to, you, you, you're gonna have to uh, um, uphold that mantle, and you're gonna have to carry that mantle. And and I said, God, I don't know if I can do it. And He said, You've been walking so far and so long by faith that you didn't even realize that it was faith. Uh, and He began to just jog my memory about everything that we had to go through up until that point uh, of of being homeless in the city of Dallas with our family members here, not knowing that we were homeless. Uh, uh, going and, and just on the struggle mode, or going through this and going through that, even in a time in our marriage where I got up and I left our marriage. Um, uh, and then I came back because God told me to go back, so mm -hmm. I came back. And, um, and, uh, and so with all of that, God was just showing me, he was like, these are the things um, 
that I position you for. And so it's, it's not about the title, but it is about the title. I've called you in a position and you've got to carry it regardless. Uh, you're already armed and dangerous, so to speak. And so I said, well, I don't know. I don't know all of this. Like, I don't know the church world. I don't know all of the religion part of it. Um, the truth be told, I've read the book. I read the Bible several times, but I don't know all of the parts of the Bible. I don't recall all of it. Are you sure I need to be sitting in this seat? And God, he just reminded me of how he, um, how he sits up one and he takes down another how he chooses us. Uh, sometimes we, um, even with the, with the story of Gideon, Gideon was like, I'm the least. And so that was me. I'm like, God, I'm the least of, of everyone that you would put in this seat that I'm, I'm, I'm being reminded of. Shouldn't be me. It shouldn't be me. And he said, the reason why I'm doing it is because no one can steal my, 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 my glory. So if they go in it, then they thinking that they would have it because of their attributes of what they've done before or this and that. But he said, when you're going in, you're going to go in it and you're going to be humble about it. You're going to be meek about it and you're going to lean to me and you're going to trust me just like you've been doing all of this time. You've been trusting me. I've been ordering your steps uh, to arrive at this point, this point. Uh, um, and then I said, okay. So I gave God the, okay. I wasn't sure, but I was like, okay. And then of course, 72 days later, my sister passes. And I said, God, you gotta be kidding me. There's no way. My sister told me that you told her to walk with me after my husband transitioned, after our mom transitioned. So in less than a year, my mom, my husband, and my sister three of the people that I cared for, uh, three of the people that I took to the doctor's office. I, I, I was there at the hospital. I, 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 I cared for them. I was a caretaker. Um, and now, on May 27th, now you're telling me that this is my new life. This is my new way of everything. Being, not only am I having to wake up without the person that I lived with for over 20 years. Everything about my life changed. The way I ate, the way I dressed, the way I slept, the way I washed clothes, washed dishes, cooked, drove, finances, everything. Parked my, even parked my car in the garage. Everything about me changed. Going to the laundry, I mean going to the dry cleaners, um, everything. Uh, 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 cleaning, how I discipline our children, Everything changed. And now the person that I grew up with, who I looked up to, that I cared for, I was a part of her wedding. She was a part of my wedding. She had two children. I had two children. She introduced me to God or reintroduced me to God at an adult age. Um, her pastor became my pastor, kind of like uh, Naomi and Ruth. Um, um, her God became my God. And so now here we are in this, in this place of saying, Carry it on, go on, go on. And I had no choice but to go on. Um, I went on uh, crippled, I went on um, hurt. Um, I didn't have one counselor, I had two. Um, I didn't have one mentor, I had several. I had a main one, but then I also had other ones. Um, because I just, I kept thinking, I'm gonna wake up in any moment, this is gonna be a dream. This is going to be a dream. But the moments I would walk past my daughter's doors and hear them cry, hear them ask God why, why them, why us, why so much, why so much pain to our family? Because my mom was like a grandmother to them, a real grandmother to them. But my sister was her second mom. Like on all of the emergency papers for my children was my husband, myself, and my sister. So um, when it got time to re-enroll them into school, just removing their names off of the paper was hard. Just not having their dad and not having my sister, remi everything reminded us that they wasn't here. Facebook posts, you know how the Facebook memories come up, it'll remind you. Family gatherings reminded us. 
not only the birthdays, the anniversaries, but just certain holidays like Christmas, Thanksgiving. My husband loved Thanksgiving. My sister loved Christmas. And so he loved Christmas too, but she she really loved Christmas. Uh, so different things just reminded us of them. And so it was like we all had to carry each other. We all had to walk this together. Like, you good? Are you good? Are you okay? You know, um, and then this is us walking it out, out loud. Um, not saying that everything was easy, but we still had to walk it out loud with all of the challenges that came up. Um, the division that came up. Uh, uh, the criticism that came up. Uh, life challenges that came up. Uh, just different things that they were experiencing. Um, the boyfriends that might have not lasted very long. You know how girls are. And so it was like, eh, eh, that's okay. Um, you know, but it was like different things that would come up that we had to just sit down. And, and, and what got us through, uh, what I know that got us through was God. I know without a shadow of a doubt, God got us through. Uh, and he got us through uh, by way of prayer. Uh, by way of being in our word, uh, my uh, my 22 year old, she said this before, and it kind of shocked me. Um, but then again, it didn't. She said, "Mom, I I knew God and I knew of God, but I didn't really know God until after my dad passed. Wow, that's when I knew God for myself. Like y'all had introduced me to him, we read about him, I was in plays, you know, I even did a couple speeches." You know, all of that. But she said, I did not know God until after my father passed. That's when I had to meet God for myself. She said, I knew that I knew that I knew that it was him because of the encounters. Because he personally came. I felt like he personally came and he spoke to me. He showed me. Um, I was able to uh, pour my tears up on him and he was able to handle it. He was able to carry me. Um, she was having uh, dark dreams and visions at one time and, and, and we prayed about it. And, and she says, I don't have them anymore. Like it was like different things that she was seeing. Like I know this could not be anybody but God. Uh, she was the one that, and I don't know if this is some people could say it's a gift or it could be a curse. But it, you know, we just call it as a gift. But she sees death. So if there's someone that's gonna die, she sees it. And so two weeks before her father passes, she sees this. Wow. But she didn't see the person. She sees right. someone close. Mm -hmm. And so just so happened to be another family member. And she came, and we called the family member. We kept calling the family member, checking on them. Uh, we went on a fast, and we were praying. And, and I didn't want to. We never in a million years imagined it would be her dad. We didn't think. We thought of everybody else but him. He was doing good. He was only up and up. We were getting ready to be discharged, going to a rehab. So all of these things were going on. And um, lo and behold, it happened. Same thing with my mom and my sister. It happened. I want to ask you, um, like, um, you are, man, that was a touching story, first of all. Let me let me just say that, you know, the fact of you're a strong lady, you know, to, to, to be able to keep pushing with the family and everything like she has done. Um, are you, like, traveling and stuff, going places without Bishop Omar now doing it on your own. At first it had to be tough, but you're kind of getting used to having to deal with everything on your own now after the years have passed, right? Yes. So, yes. I mean, you know, like, have you? did you and the family, have y'all taken a vacation or gotten away? We have taken several vacations. And that's and, a good thing. And that is a absolutely great thing. We mm -hmm. need it. We needed to unplug um, for, uh, on Father's Day that's the that's the that's day a tough that, one, yeah, yeah. that's a tough day so the first year we went to hawaii and the second year we went to new york we've never been to hawaii or new york before um but i wanted my babies away they wanted to be away and they wanted to unplug and um it was necessary it was necessary uh omni she ended up getting a uh, a comforting i don't know the name of the word but it's a it's an animal okay. uh, for that and so uh, you know, she had the cat disability for animal. Is it a, what, what is it called? Like a, I think it was like a disability, but it's they, it's for comfort. Service dog, service, like a, ser like a service, service animal. Yeah, like a service what kind animal. of animal did she get? She got a cat actually. A cat. Yes, yeah. and his name was King Julian. He was the best. <laughs> uh, this past uh, spring break, she goes off to um, spring break on vacation. Um, she comes back 
um, the person that she left her cat with, they cannot find her cat. They find the cat about a month later. Uh, the cat dies in May. Uh. And so she's having to relive every, the reason why she got the cat. Now she misses the cat. So she's having to go through. So it's one thing to miss a human being, but it's another thing to miss an animal. And so we're having to walk her back through that again, right. walk her out of that. Um, and so, uh, again, we got away. So it's just, again, let's just get away. Let's just let everything be on hold until we get back. So how long um, did it take to sort of get your life back to some sort of form of normalcy? How long did that take? Oh, my. I don't even know if I've gotten it back, really, to be honest. Right. Um, but I'm talking, like, functional, meaning, functional. like, not being in your room, be like, I, I don't want to be around nobody, I, that type of thing, just that type of normalcy. It is, you know, I just thank God for my village. I got to get a special shout-out to my village. You got to have a village. You got to have brothers and sisters uh, that will come check on you, get you out of the house, get dressed, come on, let's go. Um, and so uh, with that being said, my village would get me out. Mm -hmm. One person here, one person there at a time. Um, but there are days, there are days that where you just have a day. And if I have that day, I say to them, it's okay for me not to be okay today. Mm. So it's different if I have days with the S, but a day here and now, let me have this day. Mm -hmm. And so I, I didn't really notice, like the first time it happened, I just, I was crazy, I was out of my mind. On the 27th, my sister passed on the 27th, my husband on uh, the 11th and my mom on the 5th. But on the 27th of August of 2021, my sister passed in May. Um, I was driving my car. One of my brothers, who's a truck driver, called me. He's like, where are you? Because he wanted to talk to me about something. I said, really, to be honest with you, I don't know. And I knew the place where I was. I was on I-30. I know I-30. Like the back of my hand, I know I-30. He called me. He said, where are you? I said, I'm on, I don't know where I am. So he said, can you just give me the signs or, or read, you know? So I was reading it, and he got me to a safe place. Uh, no, he got me back home. I'm sorry. He got me back home. And when he when I closed my garage, he said, you're back home. And I said, okay. He was like, what? And I said, oh, I'm talking to him like, what, what just happened? He was like, you didn't know where you were. I said, what are you talking about? I didn't know where I was. I was driving my car. I'm, I'm fine. He said, I just talked you all the way back to your house. Wow. And I said, there's something about this 27th day. Like, something's going on. And so every 27th of the day, either the 26th or the 27th, I would have a, a mental crash. Not like a normal mental crash. I mean, like, a mental crash crash like you need to stay home on like, that day yes and so another time my best friend had called me and she cannot she she is a school teacher shout out to all the school teachers uh but she's a school teacher and so during the day you know that there's no phone calls so this particular day she called me and she said i don't know what it is but i just feel like i need to talk to you and i said okay i said i don't know what's going on i feel crappy i feel low i have no energy um, I'm going from Dallas and I'm headed to Athens now. I'm going back to my house and I just don't know what's going on. And it's, it's just like, it's like a weight. Like I can't shake it. Like I feel like I'm driving with a, a 10 pound weight like on my shoulder right now. And, and so she said, okay. So we kept talking and we kept, she made me laugh. And she said, are you, and she kept asking me, are you at home yet? Are you at home yet? So I finally said, well, I'm at home. And she said, are you at home? And I said, yes. Yeah. She said, go inside your house. I went in she said, sit down. I sat down, and she said, um, I know why you're feeling crappy. She said, do you know? I said, no. She said, look at the calendar. The moment she said, look at the calendar, I knew it was the 27th day of the month. Mm. And I said, I would not have made it down here if I didn't talk to you because I would have drifted somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I would have went. Uh -huh. And so from that point on, I went back to therapy. I was still in therapy. I have to mark it on my calendar even now to remind me on the 26th and 27th day, like this is the day, like because you gotta get yourself ready. So several months had passed, and I was doing well on the 26th and 27th day, y'all. Everything was going good, I'm like, okay, God, I'm good. September came, last month came. And what happened? The 26th day came. And, I and you didn't remember? You I didn't, didn't remember. So it's only when you don't remember that it's coming that it affects you. When I'm not prepared for it. Wow. And it just, yeah. Do you think with, with with all that you've been through, how do you think Omar, Bishop Omar, would feel about where you're at right now? I think he would be proud. 
I think he would be proud. Um, there's so much that we have overcame, uh, so many obstacles, um, some public, some private. Um, I think he would be proud that um, I took a stand, um, that our, both of our girls are out of, uh, out of high school. Uh, Omni is getting ready to graduate in May. And now he's a freshman. They're both at the same school. I think it would be proud, even about our ministry, our, our ministry um, still going forth. Um, it is still thriving. Uh, the church doors are still open, as they say. Um, I think it would be proud that uh, we are living um, and that we are doing it the Bible way. TED Talk, uh, uh, all these different things that he was a part of, like... What was it that made him stick out so much? Even seeing him, you know, them talk about when he uh, passed on on CNN. What was it that made him so impactful and able to, you know, for, to reach so many? Because everyone was a friend. Like, he always said, that's my friend. I'm like, you cannot have these many friends. <laughs> wow. But he always made you feel like you were his best friend. Not just a friend, but a best friend. Wow. He would listen he could be dead asleep. You could be talking in a meeting. He'd be, but as soon as he wake up, he would tell you the whole thing, everything. He wouldn't miss a beat. I mean, not the most. I mean, it just even in our sleep. Sometimes I'll be watching TV or I'm on the phone and he's sleeping. And I'm talking to my sister. He said, "I know everything y'all said." And I'm like, "You couldn't have heard everything." He would repeat it verbatim. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like he always brought you into his world. Even it doesn't matter if you were white, black, Hispanic, short, tall, whatever, from a different background. You could have just got out of prison. You could have been whatever. He always made you feel like you were important and that you were somebody. Wow. Mm -hmm. I know earlier um, he asked a question and you answered half of the question, but you didn't oh, yes. answer the other half. By the scripture. By the scripture. Um, go ahead. Yes. Okay, now I want you to ask that question again because I forgot. <laughs> I, was just, make sure. I was just basically asking you because of you being a woman in the ministry, a woman of the cloth, as I said earlier, a pastor, and many say that a woman should not assert authority over a man. It says that a woman, in the word, it says this in different scriptures, mm -hmm. um, and for as teaching a man. But how do you justify the fact of you being a woman pastor? Because far as with scripture. scripture, with scripture, that's what it was. Yes. So in the scripture, it says, whosoever will, let them come. And so that scripture rings well, just down in my soul, whosoever will. And then he gave some apostles. He, get, he didn't say that he gave all like men were apostles or all women were. He said he gave some to apostles, some pastors. Uh, um, some teachers. Some teachers. And so, but what rings in my spirit is, is that whosoever will. Mm. So if, 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 that's, if that's me, then I'm coming. I'm coming because God has done so much for me. He saved a rich like me, somebody that was undone, somebody who was not worthy, somebody who was running around doing all kind of crazy stuff. And even after he saved me, I still wasn't right. Amen? Mm, amen. <laughs> and then he came back, and, 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 you know, the work just keeps going. His grace is sufficient. God has, has he is the best keeper. He is the best provider. Um, I know him to be a provider. I know him to be a protector. I know him to be a way maker. I know him to be a healer. A I know, I personally know this. And so if he says, get the baton and run with it, I'm running with it. If I got to run through hell, high water, if I got to run over your mama, my mama, <laughs> whoever, I got to do it. You got to do what he said. I just got to do what he said. Okay. And he said, um, hold on. You said um, during all of this time, after, you know, grieving and all of that, you went through criticism. You went through some, you know, times. And I'm sure all of it didn't surround the fact that you are um, now a female pastor. Um, what else did you go through whereas that was concerned? And how did you overcome it? Because there's so many people who go through criticism and can't handle it. They're so involved with what other people think of them, you know, and mm -hmm. take what other people say to heart. And some people crawl up in a little ball and want to stay inside and cry and all of that. How do you deal with um, that situation? That is a great question, Miss Jamaica. That's a great question. Um, 
the criticism part is extremely hard. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that. That is extremely hard. But one of the ways uh, that I did it is to surround myself with uh, mentors, uh, uh, counselors, um, and. Uh, one of my counselors, I love her. Shout out to Prophetess Frances Cleveland. If you're watching, Prophetess, I love you. Um, but she would tell me, because I would go to her complaining, like, they said this. You know how we do. They said this. And she would listen, and she would be real quiet. I said, but what are you saying? Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, what, what is it? I said, I want to I wanna retaliate. I want to do something. I want to say something. I need to speak up for myself. And she would say, I think you need to go down. Go down? Go down and do what? Her, her saying was go down and eat the carpet means go back in prayer, mm -hmm. pray about it um, until you see them no more, mm -hmm. until you see the face of, until you see uh, 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 where they don't bother you, like the words and the criticism and, and what they say, no longer, it's no longer, it's null and void. And, and that's not easy because just to digress to say, okay, even though, because some of the stuff they say, it may be true, right? Oh, okay. It may be true. It's criticism, but it could be true, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and so you have to sit back and you just have to analyze, and you have to say, okay, God, what is it, uh, uh, or why am I going through this, and what is it that I need to get out of it? Instead of saying why, 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 and them, 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 what are you trying to download in me? What in this that I need to get out of it? How can this make me better and not bitter? How can this put me on top and not the bottom? How, how can I not lose my mind through this? So navigate me through this uncharted water to where it's not about me because it's always been about your kingdom. And so I gotta get my mind back on the kingdom. Why am I here? What is my purpose? And, 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 and then God lead me and direct me, order my steps through all of this uh, negativity, if you will, because some of it is necessary. It's necessary for our growth. Um, if I didn't have the critics and I didn't have the criticism, I wouldn't be as strong as I am today. Exactly. Because um, constructive criticism is good because you said that some of it could be true. You know what I mean? Could be true. And uh, anything that's true to me, I would think, I would call that constructive criticism, but Correct. not everybody know how to handle constructive criticism. Well, the word of God says, them that live godly shall suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. And then it also turns around and as, as one of the fruits of the spirit, it gives you long suffering. So right. there's things that you are supposed to be able to endure in order to grow. There has to be some pruning. Yes. And I think a lot of times people don't look at that part. They want to look at the joy. They want to look at the love. They want to look at all of the different things that go outside of them going. But Jesus walked to a cross. We believe in Christ. So he walked, he walked to a cross, uh, Golgotha. And then you got to understand, yes. we should be able to look at his walk and his way and understand that if he went through it, if that happened to him, what do you think is going to happen with us? You know, so he's given us the key to be able to pass through this life. And but it didn't say we wouldn't have to go through some hardship. A lot of times they was trying to kill him and it wasn't time yet. And he would just seamlessly go through the crowd or he wouldn't be where they thought he was or mm -hmm. he was there and they couldn't even recognize him as who he was. Stuff like that. So God has a way of us looking and understanding our path. But we will endure some situations that's going to be tough. And I think that we're in the flesh. So that when he was in the flesh, what did he have to endure? Why was he praying? Why was he praying to take this cup away from me? We got to go through some stuff. And I think a lot of times if we say we believe in him, because a lot of people don't agree with the way we believe, and that's cool too. But the book that I read and believe in shows me how I'm supposed to take the medicine given. Mm -hmm. And I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? That's why I believe the way I do. And as far as you being a woman in the ministry, you know what I'm saying? I really, like I said, uh, you got when you look at Philippians and you look at they was in some preach for contention, some preach for strife, some preach for this, some preach for that. Mm -hmm. But we thank God that the gospel's being preached. Yes, he said he didn't when they was preaching and they seen some that was he said they cast not demons in your name and he was like. You know, don't try to stop them because if they be for us, they can't easily be against us. Yeah. So that's the part where, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. where I just don't get in the way of whatever God's doing with whoever. That's you and God's business. That's personal. Yeah. So I don't really, I can't say, who am I to sit up here and try to tell you what you ought to not do mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit's supposed to be leading and guiding you anyway? The anointing yes. of God. It never said that anointing couldn't be in a woman. I never read that. 
The knowing can be, it'll teach you all things too, is what the words say. Mm -hmm. So we just, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely knowing my path is for me to teach. Who am I definitely to try to talk about you? And and I am, woo, when you look at the way that I study and read and teach and do things, I am totally not into the ways of whatever somebody's doing. So I never get caught up in that. I just say keep on preaching God's word. You know what I mean? Amen. And don't even trip. Like, what's the name of the church again? Down uh, It's downtown, right? It is downtown. It is Kingdom Worship and Restoration Church, better known as K-War. Shout out, K-War. Mm -hmm. uh, it is located at 1401 Botham John Boulevard, Dallas, Texas. Uh, we would love to have y'all come. I'll come by there, but, I, <laughs> you know, I, you know, it's hard to get me to pull up, but I'll pull up one day, right? We got to pull up because she keep coming on here <laughs> just to try to show. Y'all you know. got to pull up. Don't nobody <laughs> else pulls up. <laughs> no, I'm definitely going to pick a day. We can go hang out with Chico Bean and Faison Love and Ice T. We can definitely go hang out with Anita Jawa. What mm -hmm. days, what what um, what um times are your service? It's on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 at 10 a.m. Oh, okay. Yeah, I need, to, I need to go by that one. So is Wednesday more like a Bible study or is that the It's Bible study. It's okay. Bible study. Wednesday night is Bible study. Sundays is enhanced worship experience. Have you seen somebody? Have you seen somebody lose somebody that you was able to help because you had gone through such a loss yet? Yes. Um, yes, several. You see um, what I'm saying? Yeah. And you don't have to name them because yeah. we like to keep things secluded. But yeah. Just that is one of the things that God kept speaking to me about when you was telling your story. Wow. Because we go through things for a reason. And the reason we go through it is so we can help others to go through their situation. Right. And nobody's had to encounter what you've had to encounter like you've had to encounter it so quickly a lot of times. So I think that opens up the avenue for you to help somebody else that's having losses in their life. That's I, so true. I, I, have, yeah. I have the widow speaks. There you go. And so that's what we do. We talk to male uh, and female, mainly females, because males don't stay widows very long. <laughs> Let's just put it out there, y'all. Well, you know, don't hate on us. You yeah. know, we just trying to make our way. Y'all will get remarried. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told him that the other day, but he's like, no, 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 it don't always happen that way. Yeah, but at yeah. the end of the yeah. day, I definitely get it. Like, I just think that that would be something that would you would be so valuable in the fact that you losing your sister and your you you know your your husband like that and that's a big deal you know so now you you know you're able to help and talk to others you know what I mean yeah but by helping others how much does that help you it helps me it helps me tremendously because I know where they were or where they are and um and I can feel their grief it's not something it's not like I'm giving them my opinion at all. This is something that I live, breathe, walk through. It's my experience. And so when they say they don't want to do something or they don't like something or they're upset, they go through all of these phases. You know, of course, with, with grief, we go through all these phases. And so that particular phase that they're in, they could be losing their mind. But I'll, I'll definitely understand it because I know I was right. there. Right. Wow. I, a little bit off subject. Um, how long do a woman have to be a widow before she can, you know? <laughs> Get remarried. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you pop it on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she pop it on Facebook. I see you pop it on Facebook. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, I know some cats on Facebook. You know, you don't want that smoke. <laughs> like, no, but, but I'm just messing. I have and do to you mess even with think you. about that? Because at the same time. Nah, yes, no, 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 no. Hold be. on. Let me, let me say what I'm saying. Um, no, because uh, some people, going back to what people think again, mm -hmm. because when you're thinking about something like that, especially being in a position that you're in, and when you think about, you know, moving on, a lot of people are like, uh, they going to think I'm this, they going to think this way, you know, thinking about what other people think. Mm -hmm. Does that affect you with, no. with certain choices? I do not think about it, no, at all. Okay. I was married to him over 20 years. I served him until death did us apart. So if I want to move on, I'm going to move on. Got it. And I must be comfortable in moving on. That's yeah. whatever that time is. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all don't just be stalking if she on Facebook. I've seen her on Facebook. <laughs> Now, you had a speech that you said the other day. It, this is something about women's. This is this month is is it domestic violence? Domestic I, I've violence seen you speaking on that. Cancer. What yes. put it on your heart to speak on that with so much passion here lately? What's what's up? Uh, because again, I see the numbers going. 
Um, I'm having to counsel families through domestic violence. And um, as I said in, in, my, in my speech earlier. Enough it, is enough. Enough is enough, but yeah. I'm a byproduct. Okay. So my mom and my dad. Mm. Uh, my mom uh, was 23, um, and her and my dad got into an argument. Wow. And uh, she ended up in a coma. She woke up from a coma, and she was paralyzed on the left side. Wow. She went home from the hospital. I'm doing the short version. Mm -hmm. She went home from the hospital, and they had me. Uh, and then the cycle started all over again. So wow. she was pregnant when she was in a coma? No, no, no. She after went she home, came after, home. After she after came, came home, home, she got pregnant. Yeah, okay. she got pregnant with me. And then the cycle of abuse it started all over again. Did it ever get better? Uh, she got a divorce, and that's how it got that's better. That's how it got better. But it's, such, it's so crazy how in relationships, it's always... The woman always make excuses for the abuser. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's out of fear, mm -hmm. but sometimes they say it's out of love because I have friends who were in um, abusive relationships and I could mm -hmm. never understand why they couldn't leave. Um, because it's, especially when you have children, especially girls, and, I'm, and I would always say, would you like that to happen to your child, your daughter? Would you want somebody to do that to you? Because that's the example you're setting for your child. Right. But then they will still stay in it for years and years and years. And I'm like... It's easier said than done because it's like a coping mechanism. So in, with the abusers, the violators, they'll say they'll do it, then they'll come back and say, I'll never do it again. And then they'll make it up. They'll try to do flowers. They'll try to take you out to eat. They'll try to smooth it over. So it's like, it's like you're saying, well, I have to forgive him because he loves me or he takes care of the bills. So they just end up in that cycle of abuse year after year, moment after moment. And, and they feel like they can't let go because he's made it seem like he's all they have. Regardless what? if they got a parent or if they got siblings. Now, my dad, I love my dad. That's what I was about to go I was going to say, I love my dad. I love my dad. Um, from the age of 12 to 18, I did not like my dad. In fact, I didn't love my dad at that time. I hated my dad because now I'm, saw everything. I'm older. No, 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 I'm older. I hear about it. My mom tells me. Oh, so you never saw when No, I he... never saw him. Okay. I never saw him, but my mom tells me. And I'm like, that's the joker that did this to you? Because like, now my, my, you know, I'm seeing my mom is handicapped. Kids are making fun of me, making fun of her. And I'm like, I'm always on fight mode. Like, you don't talk about my mom. This is who raised me, who da 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 da. And when she told me, it was like, at first I was shocked. I was like, there's no way my dad could do anything like this. And to come to find out, he did. Mm. And so I, I, I didn't like him. I was like, how can you do this? And then how can you do this to my mom? And you go get remarried and you start a whole new family. And didn't do that to his new family. Yeah, and didn't do it to his new family. Did you it's, ask him? Yes, I was like, what? And, but my dad never gave me a straight answer. Mm -hmm. And so from 18, from 12 to 18, it was like a separation. And then at 18, I just said, you know what? Let me forgive him. Uh, there was no encounter. I can't say I was in church. I can't say there was a God encounter. It was just something. But I know what it was. It was the Holy Spirit that was inside of me telling me that, you know, you need to do this. Mm -hmm. So I did it, and I asked my dad for forgiveness. And he was like, forgive you for what? Because he didn't know I didn't like him. Oh, okay. And um, and so we did, and we had a short time. So from 18 to 19, my husband was, my husband, my dad was alive. And 19, my dad died suddenly. So I thank God that I had a year to just get us back together or for us to be back together. Mm -hmm. And my my dad died at night when I was 19. My daughter, Omni, uh, her father, which is my late husband, he died at 19. Mm -hmm. So I know, I knew how to walk Omni through that. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't know how to walk myself or Anaya, because Anaya was 16. Um, um, but I knew very well how Omni felt. And so when my dad did that, um, when I acknowledged it, and then I saw it in other family members, I knew that it was a generational curse that was on my family. I saw other men. Um, and the truth be told was that when I was younger, I knew the I knew I was something different about me. I didn't know what it was. But even like five and six year olds, seven, ten, I would be playing, and the grown ups would come to me and have a whole conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, my mama told me not to be in grown up business. Right. <laughs> like I'm gonna get a whooping. Like why are you telling me this? But it would be like deep stuff. It wouldn't be like, hey, like we gonna eat hot dogs. It'd be like, hey, I'm cheating on my wife. <laughs> Um, hey, I'm like I'm, you got experience yeah. to even advise them or nothing. Yeah, like you know what, I, I'm doing drugs. I don't know, or you know, or I got this kind they of. They just want to listen in the air. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't understand that God was giving me the ear Prepare, to hear. Right, He was preparing me 
for what I would be doing when I grew up. And so, but yeah, the domestic violence, it's very, very near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I don't want anyone to be controlled or not have self-respect or low self-esteem or, or not know their value. And so when I see women in those relationships, they don't know who they are. Have you ever came across um, a, a domestic violence case where the woman was the abuser? There was one incident, yes, I have. And she was raised in a domestic violence uh, a situation to where her mother was the, uh, was the victim. And so she said, I will never be that person. So she flipped it. And, and became so, the aggressor. And became the aggressor, yes. Mm. And so she had to be walked out of that, but by the time the guy wanted to even deal with her, he was gone. Mm -hmm. And so it was something that she had to deal with because it was from relationship to relationship that she was doing it. And then like they say, when you meet your match. So she met someone that said, I'm not gonna take it like everybody else take it. So now you're gonna have to get some help. Mm -hmm. um, or we both gonna be in here doing that. Right. Know? And so, um, and it takes time. It takes time. It takes uh, self-awareness uh, to know that you need help. A lot of people don't think they need help. Yeah. A lot of the abusers don't think, hey, I'm good. I don't need help. Mm -hmm. I can control this. I can control this. Mm -hmm. And so there are classes for that. Uh, there's help for that. There's therapy for that. Um, um, there, is, there are people that are around that, that, can, that have been through that. They've, they've experienced that, and they can walk them through. But it's, not, it's easier said than done because, yeah. you know, hey, I'm not going to hit you anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. It takes practice and reprogramming your, your thought process. Right, right. Wow. And then you'll go back to it and you'll gravitate to it because then you want to be the man or you want to be head or the woman is making you feel a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how to handle certain things because you were never taught how to handle certain things because all you saw was when she reacts this way, this is how I need to react. Not right. let's talk it out. Let's this, that, whatever. And then sometimes the female can also make you into that because that's what she was used to. She's used to being beat on. She's used to being called these different words. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the person that she was with, she's with currently may not have been an abuser right. from the get-go, but she turned him into one because that's what she feel that loves look like. You see what I mean? I've heard mm -hmm. of cases like that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting to turn yeah. someone to be an abuser. Yeah, because because oh, yeah. my daddy abused me, or that's what I saw my well, mom getting abused. I had abused a friend and stuff of mine like that, that told me that one time that he had had a girl that he had been dating, and uh, she ran and, and basically jumped in front of the door, and he basically pushed her out the way, and they were trying to get away from her, and he going leaving, and that's when she turns around and goes, "So come on, and, and let's let's get together now, let's make love now." Really is what it was. Wow. Yeah. So it, it can be twisted like that. Mm -hmm. So it ain't yeah. always just something that that it's some it's a trained thought. It's a way that you've seen people do what they see. They now. do exactly. It's a behavior. Yeah, yeah. It's a behavior. It's a learned so behavior. It's a learned mm -hmm. behavior, and you hate that, but that that's why you gotta you gotta get in there and just try to understand how to be a new creature. Mm -hmm. how to change some things. All of us need to be replenished. It ain't just a, abuse is just one thing. I told you about that food the other day when we was talking. Hey, everybody got their food. Everybody you know, have an addiction. Everybody got their thing. Something yeah. is, that, mm -hmm. that, that the devil is playing and toying around with you with. That's true. It's, it's, some of it may come off domestic. Another may come off to, as where you're a gluttonous person. Another may come out where you got pride. So it could be work. You, know, you work too with, much. You work too much, I have no time for the family. Yeah. It could be you watch TV too much. It That's could true. be so many, anything you dedicate your life to too much. You have some people say you, you love it God. It becomes an idol. Right. Some people exactly. say That's you, it. you dedicate mm -hmm. your life to God too much and you, you, you have no time for nobody else, but you're supposed to have balance with your family and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Wow. And and when you said idol, it made me think about what I was teaching in day because they was eating that food, sacrificing it to idol. So mm -hmm. definitely, man, I'm going to get you out of here, man. We've kept you all day today. We got to eat with you. We hung out with you. I, I knew to get you over here. It's like old Ben Edom had that ark mm -hmm. up in the house with him. You got to keep something around you sometime to get you closer to God. And that's what we done over here today on Boss Talk 101. We brought in Pastor Anita Jawa, who's about to take us out of here with a prayer. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's time for us to bless the cameras. See, y'all playing. Y'all don't understand why Boss Talk keep being uh, uh, right here for you. It's because we continue to say 
We love God, put God first, and bring in great, great guests like Anita Jawa, who basically shows us love and comes every time we call. We thank you so much. You are welcome. You're welcome. I am so honored uh, and blessed to be here again. Um, I thank y'all for your friendship. Um, I got to say this before we close. Um, the other day when I got a call from my brother E, just to call to check on me, and we usually go back and forth. When I tell you he knows the word of God, y'all, he, he really knows the word of God. And so we play around, but he'll get in their word. But <laughs> on, on that particular day, I needed that. I needed that. I needed that call. I needed that laughter. Wow. And so when I got off the phone, uh, you didn't know this. At the end, I prayed. But after, I prayed with us. But then after I got off the phone with you, I prayed again. Wow. And I thank God because just to lay you on somebody else's heart or mind, that's huge for me. Because mm. we have so many other things to do. Y'all are busy, busy, mm. busy. But just to think that you carved out that hour just to chit-chat, check on, uh, uh, talk about the word, go in the word. And, and that was just such a, a, a heavenly encounter that I just like, God, that just absolutely blew my mind. It wasn't, it wasn't anything about money. It wasn't anything about a gift. Just giving a person your attention and your time, mm -hmm. that meant so much to me. Man, thank you. You prayed for me. I told you that prayer. <laughs> Man, I, I was so on my, I knew you had prayed for my daughter. I talked to my daughter that day. I told her we had prayed for her, and it's like it gave me reassurance for my son, Malachi, and, and just our conversation. I, I pray for my sister, of course. Don't say it. Don't we, forget. We, we Don't pray forget for my her. sister. We pray for you her. You know how he said that too. We pray for her. We pray for her. her. Pray for her. But at the end of the day, it was just. Uh, it, was, it was. It was. Man, I love you so much. Stop playing. But at any rate, it just. It was just. Uh, it was just something else to prayer, man. Like I said, and just the conversation. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like ain't nothing like having people who you can talk to about different things. And it was genuine. Life. Very genuine. Very genuine. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show again, man. Like I said, man, um, we're going to keep continuing the Lord say the same, you know, bring you through um, whenever you'll come and, and sit down so people can hear. Because I, I try to put this out, like, usually on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I be trying to do. But then a lot of time people, you know, Sunday they be done parted all night, Saturday a lot of people mm -hmm. watch Boss Talk. <laughs> So I got I to gotta clip this out on them boys, man. <laughs> so we got to close in the prayer. We about to close in prayer. Okay. Just because I'm having a good time smiling don't mean we ain't going to put that prayer in it. You know? <laughs> Let's go. Father, we thank you on today, God. Thank you for Boss Talk 101. Thank you for E and Stephanie. Lord, I just thank you for this moment, this opportunity, God. Thank you for this day of grace, of mercy, Lord. Lord, we just ask, God, that you bless the listeners, God, everyone that's tuned in to uh, the podcast, God, that you just open up their ears of understanding, God. Lord, we just ask, God, that you go before them, God. Protect them, lead them, guide them, direct them, Father God. Lord, encamp all around about them, Lord. Strengthen us as we walk, God. Strengthen us on our journey, God. Everyone has a journey. Everyone has another door. Everyone has another level, Father God. Be with us through it all, Father God. Lord, we just thank you right now, God. Lord, we just uh, uh, bless the children, Lord, everyone that's watching. Father, bless the ministries, our work, God, all the friendships, the relationships, the network, everyone that they've partnered with, everyone that's on their network, Lord, all of the people that are tuning in, Lord, allow this to be a day, God, of transformation. Allow this to be a day of salvation, Father God. Allow them to come to themselves like the prodigal son and say, and just have an, an aha moment, Father God. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for the prodigal sons that are coming home. Thank you for the wayward daughters, Lord. I speak to the men and the women, God, that are out there and nobody else sees, nobody else cares, God. Lord, but you care, Father God. Lord, touch their heart, their mind, their body, their soul, God. Lord, uh, uh, enlightening them, God, quickening them, God. Bring them out of the dark spaces and the places, oh God, and bring them into your marvelous light, Lord. Have your way today, Father. And Lord, we give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. Anoint this mic. Anoint this building. Anoint this area, Father God. Lord, we take claim of this area, this region, Father God, that it is for you, Father God. Lord, if you be for us, you are more than the world against us, Lord. And we speak it into, oh God, into 
into existence, Father God. We speak those things as though they're not, as though they already are. And we take claim, God, to this area and this whole uh, uh, this whole podcast, God, this whole uh, region, Father God. Lord, this whole movement, Father, that these two individuals are blessed indeed, Lord. Increase, God. There is no lack concerning them, Lord. There will be nothing missing and nothing broken over their lives, Father. Lord, I thank you right now, God, that their lives will continue to touch not only hundreds, not only thousands, but millions, Father God. Lord, I thank you right now that you have given them this platform, Father, and that you are taking them up to the to another dimension in you, Father, that there will be more reaches, God. There will be more, more growth, God. Lord, there will be longevity, God. What long life will you satisfy us, Father God? Lord, we speak longevity over this podcast, God. Lord, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray tonight. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talking. And we out.